Yeah, I know. You see me in my uniform, you know, I'm going going to work. Bye, Claire. Bye, sweetheart. <laughs> what what? Where are you going? I'm going to work, honey. Gotta earn your cat food. Alright. I love you. Oh <laughs> my key is scary. Alright, bye love. Where'd you go? Good morning guys, how are ya? Welcome back to my channel, it's me, Steven. It is 6.48, my show time at the crewroom is 7.40, so I've got plenty of time to get there. Um, today's gonna be a very, very long day. I'm flying from Vegas to Kansas City, Kansas City to Myrtle Beach, and then back to Kansas City. So, it's a long day, and there is a tremendous amount of weather all over the country, especially where we're flying, uh, you know, Myrtle Beach, that kind of thing. So I'm a little anxious about what the day is going to bring, but you got to be a palm tree, as they say. Um, it is early in the morning for me. I don't like early shows. I prefer showing up at work at like 3 p.m. at the earliest, but whatever. Um, so I've got, oh, ha -ha, I got 20. Look at that. I've got a 21 hour layover in Kansas City and I've got a 20 hour layover in Orlando this trip. So I might go out and about, who knows? I might wanna save the money, but I'll bring you along with me either way. All right, let's go to work. Hey guys, all right, so 92 passengers to Kansas City. Uh, we'll be boarding in four minutes. Uh, and I don't care what happens on this trip. Whoop. Hi. I don't care what happens on this trip. The crew is amazing. So anything could happen and it'll be just fine. So let's go to Kansas City. Hey guys. All right. So we are in Kansas City. Um, we have 29 passengers booked for this flight. Uh, there is no flight next to us being delayed. So I don't think we'll have a redo of my last flight but uh 29 passengers this this flight was perfectly fine no no problems no hesitations no challenges uh as i told you amazing crew so no complaints but you know whatever i say that something happens right afterwards right so let's just cross our fingers the rest of this day goes nice and smooth it's it's a long one so i could use an easy day all right, so do you remember I said, we only have 27 passengers on board. What could go wrong? Nothing could go wrong. Mechanical, wah, wah, wah. Uh, so yeah, passengers were perfectly patient, lovely. Um, but we had some mechanical issues we had to have in Kansas City. And since Kansas City is not one of our bases, we had to get uh, maintenance from outside, you know, wherever that is. Uh, it could potentially have taken hours for them to show up, but thankfully they showed up really, really quick. The delay was like an hour and 10 minutes in the end, so it wasn't that bad. I was able to talk with the captain and see if it's possible to contact the ground here and see if they can hold the LaGuardia flight where eight of our 27 passengers were gonna be going. So <clears throat> hope uh, they held the flight. Hopefully everybody got on. <clears throat> um, that's it. Are we again? I've mentioned earlier. We are the crew is the best. Uh, we did lose our chaser because she is and she was awesome, but she finished up here today. And our replacement chaser seems very, very nice, so that's all good too. That's it. So, one more leg to Kansas City. We have 61 passengers on this flight this time. Uh, let's just make this an easy leg with no delays, no challenges. No problems. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. So I will see you in Kansas City. Hey guys, how are you? Welcome to Kansas City. Uh, let's do a room tour real quick. That's the room. No big shakes. Um, so this last leg of the day was a breeze. Thank goodness. Uh, no drama, no trauma, easy. Uh, part of that, we had a very light crowd and they all behaved perfectly. We have one poor little boy in the back who was just crying and crying and crying, but he was a little boy. Um, the crew, as I think I mentioned earlier, is fantastic. 
really, really fantastic. And as I've said before, having a great crew can make any trip easier. But this one uh, just happens to be perfect for this trip. I uh, got to work this morning kind of feeling a little down, a little overwhelmed. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a hangover, not that, that I use that word very often, um, of the last video. If you remember me talking about, I was kind of feeling a little overwhelmed, uh, broken, I think is a word I was used. That was a little strong for a word, but, um, you know, I shouldn't watch the news as often as I do or listen to it. I listen to a lot of the NPR. And um, this week has just been really rough in the world. You know, with COVID um, strengthening around the country and uh, just burning through populations, um, what's going on in Afghanistan is horrifying. You know, like you have to you have to agree, like Biden said, there's there was never a good time to pull out of Afghanistan. It never would have been a good time. And what do you do, stay there for 50 years? But then again, the minute we leave, the Taliban, you know, just overruns the place. But um, And what's gonna happen to the people of Afghanistan, particularly the women? So I'm just, yeah, just I'm feeling very emotional about that. Um, COVID in general has just been crazy. People in general have been sort of crazy. Um, I don't know much about the details of it, but I also saw on the news that I believe he was Las Vegas based. He's a flight attendant with Southwest, I think, and he died uh, from COVID in his 30s, I believe. He was vaccinated and he had gone on a work trip. The article I don't know. I don't know what Southwest hasn't said anything that I know of, but the article said that like he went on a work trip to Hawaii and then he must have been exposed to COVID during that flight. He got home, he got sick, he was on a ventilator for a few weeks and then he died. And I don't know him and I, I but I feel I feel crushed on behalf of his family and his friends and Southwest. He was a very high flyer. Apparently he loved his job. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just a, a rude awakening that like even vaccinated with masks on, you know, it's still deadly. Um, which doesn't mean vaccines don't work. I will, because, you know, yes, this man died and, if, and some have, but considerably less out of millions and millions and millions of people who have been vaccinated. So please don't let this be the, the reason you don't get vaccinated because, you know, just get vaccinated. Um, but it's just kind of overwhelming. That on top of everything else has just been making things kind of stressful. Um, so I got to work. I'm sorry, this big long ramble about how dark the world is right now. But I got to work this, uh, this morning and I just kind of it's not that I didn't want to be there. I was just not in great spirits. Um, and I kind of got lost getting into the employee parking. And it was just a kind of a, a, a crappy morning. And I was trying not to show it, but, you know, I was kind of moody. But I got to the crew room and I met my crew. And they are, they are they're so amazing. They really did lift me up and out of my head, which is vital. Um, uh, one of the things you'd say a lot in recovery meetings is, um, I'm up in my head without adult supervision and that's not a good thing, you know? Um, so I'm just grateful for my crew, not just because they made the day easier at work, but I was able to go to work and kind of have them be so great as to lift me out of this kind of dark space I'm in a little bit. So maybe I should have opened up a little bit to them about how I've been feeling, but it all worked out. It all worked out well. Um, I just feel crushed for the friends and family and the coworkers of this poor man. Um, whatever. Um, yeah. So I'm here for about 20 hours today. I've got some food heating up in my Hot Logic Mini. Um, I think Philip and my other coworker are probably going to go out and do something tomorrow. I don't know. Um, our show, our shuttle is at 4.30 tomorrow, so I think I might just stay in my room and hang out. Um, I got lots of food with me. I got my laptop. I'm going to do some push-ups. 
nothing crazy. So I'm just going to hang out in my room for this layover and relax. Tomorrow we have one leg to um, Orlando. And um, I think the three of us are going to go, and maybe our chaser will go to uh, SeaWorld. So I'm going to save my money uh, for, you know, tomorrow because there's no need to spend it here in Kansas City. Uh, and then splurge a little bit in Orlando, I think. I don't know. We'll see. I'll take you along with me, though. So I'm sorry to be like, blah, 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 blah. But um, here I am. <laughs> this is what you got. Um, I'll talk to you later. Hey, guys. Hi. So it is 4.09. I've got about 20 minutes before I have to be downstairs at the shuttle. Uh, so I have to put my uniform on, which takes me like 30 seconds. I have to put my food in my lunch bag, which takes me a moment or two. And I'm finishing up my lunch slash dinner. I'm having this. I had the, uh, it's, of course, it's backwards, sorry. I had the uh, garlic parmesan version last week uh, on my last trip. I got these at Walmart. I think it was like five bucks. Delicious. So good. This is the, <laughs> it's right in my Hot Logic Mini. Uh, it doesn't look very yummy. Uh, but it's very delicious. It's just pieces of chicken breast with uh, pesto all over it. And it's like five bucks. You can't beat that. Uh, I wanted to divide it into two portions because it's a lot of food for one meal. But um, since it's such a mess to kind of put into anything, I'm just going to eat what I can and then toss the rest. But, um, and one more thing while we're talking about food. A new guilty pleasure. Uh, I, I don't eat cup noodles that often anymore. When I first started with my airline, we sell them on the aircraft. I know you folks at the Legacies are laughing at me, but we sell cup noodles and people buy them all the time um, for four bucks, mind you. <laughs> Lately, we've been getting these new ones called Stir Fry. Um, and I bought the, this one at the grocery store. It's called Hot Garlic Chicken. Oh my God, it's delicious. It's so good. It's also like 15 times your daily needs for salt. Uh, sodium. It's really, really high in sodium. But there's um, stir fry. It's like a thicker um, version of a ramen noodle. Uh, and it's uh, very garlicky and it's surprisingly spicy. It's delicious. It was like 89 cents at Walmart. So throw this in my, in my um, tote bag. So if I get hungry on the aircraft and I want to, you know, have all that sodium, um, I can just pull this out, put some hot water in there. Um, or I have uh, slices of carrot and some hummus. That's my snack for the rest of this trip. I think that's it. Let's just finish my lunch, put my uniform on, and get out of here. So I will see you either at the airport or on the plane next time. All right, see you soon. Hey, guys. Hi. So I made it to my hotel room here in Orlando. Um, oh, my God. So today was super easy and then it wasn't um <laughs> we only had one leg to um orlando from kansas city uh we were booked at 61 passengers i think we had i think we had like 48 get on board for some reason um one of our gate agents uh, we were talking before boarding and i was like wow this is such a light flight i know that you know kansas city isn't always our top destination but coming to orlando i expected if you were passengers then she said she thinks it's just that after, you know, our little meltdown, uh, a week and a half of whether or not you're going to get to where you're going, I think she said that she thinks people are just a little hesitant to book with us right now. And I totally understand that. But we'll gain back their trust um, one passenger at a time if I have to. Um, so the flight, oh, the air conditioning turned off, thank God. Um, the flight tonight was super easy. Everyone in the front... <laughs> <laughs> really behaved. Uh, we had a couple people in the back. We had a family in, in that in back that just wasn't the easiest. But um, everyone in the front was just fantastic. Um, I'm flying lead, as I think I mentioned. And on a 320, uh, a 319, I'm up by myself in the front, which was fine. I got some reading done and I got to chat and take care of some of our guests. Um, and, uh, you know, I told you earlier that I was overwhelmed lately by um just politics the world you know what's going on in different parts of the country what's happening in different parts of the world covid 
just feeling overwhelmed by like the world right now and it's just it's a challenge to be a flight attendant right now uh that meltdown was just ugh, a mess um and again like i told you we have these amazing crew this amazing crew amazing crew um i've mentioned philip before i don't know if all my coworkers want me to tell you their names but um heather was fantastic uh she was our beat of night she's amazing gorgeous um and just beautiful and, and inside and out um uh but you know they totally made this trip easier for me to you know just to kind of relax and be at peace uh and then tonight it's probably about 15 minutes before landing um i was talking to one of our guests her she has like a one-year-old in her lap she's like he's a lap child and then she has an eight-year-old son and the little boy his ears were hurting when we were de descending and they were just oh man he was he was really in pain uh and i was talking to her and trying to like you know chat and um distract the little boys sometimes when they're distracted they don't recognize the pain so much but we got to talking and it turns out that she was flying from kansas city to baltimore originally but her flight was canceled and so they were booking her through orlando i guess um all of her bags and stuff were on their way to baltimore i don't think she uh you know not everyone is a professional traveler um, and, um, I don't think she was prepared for a cancellation. So she didn't have much stuff with her. She has a one-year-old. I don't know if she had diapers. She didn't have a lot with her, a tote bag and some odds and ends. Uh, but, um, the airline booked her through to Baltimore through Orlando and they got her a hotel in Orlando, but I don't think she was, uh, prepared or financially prepared to get to the hotel, which apparently was like, it wasn't near the airport. So I'm feeling just, just really bad for this passenger who's, you know, and it, thousands and thousands of people were affected this past, you know, few weeks with us. But this one woman, she's sitting right in front of me and she's got this little baby who's so beautiful and crying. Um, and I, she, English is not her first language. I think she's from somewhere in Africa. The fabric that she used to hold her baby up behind her like a little papoose but in the back uh was of african design um but blah 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 so the hotel she the airline paid for a hotel for her but they weren't able to get her to the hotel and the hotel didn't have a shuttle from the airport so i'm like i'm feeling so bad right now and she has no food she has no snack she has no water or if she did she ate them on the plane you know so I'm just feeling just awful. Um, so some snacks, I don't tell the company, but some snacks and may have just mistakenly end up nearby her. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> and uh, as we get closer to the airport, I'm realizing like this woman is not, she's, I'm sure she's totally capable of raising her children and taking care of herself, but I felt very responsible. I'm going to start to cry. Um, but she didn't know how to get to the hotel, to the hotel. And so, um, I walked her and Philip, who I, I keep telling you, Philip is such a nice guy. He is such a nice man. Um, I, I was taking it upon myself to, I told my coworkers, you guys go to the hotel. I'm going to take her to her hotel or get her an Uber to the hotel. So I'm just going to just make sure that she's taken care of. So you guys go to the, or the, the, um, hotel um it turns out that heather was being rerouted to Por uh, puerto rico the port thing she was all ready to go <laughs> get to the airport to, to the hotel but she's being rerouted now to puerto rico um and philip wasn't gonna leave me alone so he came with me he's a doll um so we walked her up to customer service but there's like 30 people in line at customer service and the people behind the desk were already frazzled. You could tell they were like overwhelmed. I'm sorry. The story goes on forever, right? So, um, I just tell, I wish I'd gotten her name, but I was telling the woman, like, I'm going to get you an Uber to your hotel. So I, I got the hotel information. Uber was only, it was going to be $26 to get to the hotel, but her, and this is like, it's almost 11 o'clock at night. It turns out her flight 
um, boarding starts at 5.22 or something, 5.23 in the morning. So she'd have to be at the airport at least by 4 or 4.30 at the latest to get to her gate through security, all that stuff. And um, so we're, we're walking towards where an Uber pickup would be. And she says that as much as she appreciates, and she expressed thanks, she was, she was very grateful because we were trying to go out of our way to make sure she was safe and, and taken care of, you know, because who would want to be like just stranded in an airport with not, with not knowing how to get somewhere or not being maybe financially secure to get, you know, not everyone can just jump in and spend 50 bucks in an Uber. I don't know. But, um, but she expressed thanks, but she said, you know, she's going to stay at the airport because, you know, it's only four, four and a half hours before she has to be at the gate anyway. So, um, I just felt bad because she didn't have a blanket or pillows or anything. I don't know. Uh, her eight year old son, thank goodness. You know, when you see a good kid, when you recognize a really well behaved, intelligent, just good resourceful kid, this kid was great. Uh, and I could tell that he wasn't going to be a strain on his mother. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I've been on the verge of tears. We got in the shuttle. Boy, this video is going to be long. Sorry. We got in the shuttle. <laughs> I just keep talking. We got in the shuttle and uh, another flight attendant with my airline was there, Liz. Hi, Liz. Um, and, you know, we're talking about what happened uh, at the airport. And she, and she told me, and I'm on the verge of tears already, right? And she was telling me how she watched my videos before she went to training and how my videos helped her uh, get through training. And I was getting, <laughs> she was like, you're so appreciated. All of my class watched your videos. And, you know, and I was like between feeling like helpless over trying to make sure this passenger and her children were taken care of. I'm on the verge of tears there. And then Liz is telling me all these nice things about <laughs> Me, me and my videos and how nice I was and how helpful I was. I'm like, oh God, I'm trying not to cry in this, on the shuttle, you know. It's just awful. <laughs> Something I, I was thinking, I'm sorry, this, this really goes into tangents. I'm sorry. So while I'm deciding that I'm going to get this woman an Uber and try and make sure that she gets to the hotel safely, um, I'm thinking <sighs> life would be so much easier if I didn't have this sense of compassion that just seems to just weigh on me. Being compassionate and empathetic is not something that's native to me because I spent a good 35 years of my life being a self-centered jerk, uh, honestly, just seriously. I can tell you, I can promise you, I spent decades just talking and thinking about myself. Ask the few friends I have. Lex. Ask my friend Lex. <laughs> He's He knows. He's watched me hopefully transform. But the sense of compassion that I have for like cats and pigeons and even mice. You know, because I feed, I feed mice when I see them at the bus stops. Um, and then, you know, to have my heart break for this poor woman who doesn't know how to get to a hotel... Oh, I'm like, my life would be so much easier if I didn't worry about other people. <laughs> it must be easier to be mean. I don't know, but blah, blah, blah. So I am over, I'm, I'm starving. I haven't really eaten much. So um, I had some pesto chicken wicked early this afternoon. So uh, I'm going to settle in, have some snacks, probably have a little cry because I just feel very emotional. Uh, do men have PMS? That's what it feels like. But no cramping. How lucky. Um, so, oh my God, I'm just totally wasting your time now. So I'm going to talk to you tomorrow. All right, have a good night. Hey guys. All right, so uh, I have just under an hour to get ready for the shuttle, uh, giving me time to jump in the shower and become a human being. I spent most of this day sleeping, honestly. Um, I did not sleep well last night. Um, my goal was to um, get a good night's sleep and then early this morning jet off on an Uber or a Lyft to SeaWorld in Orlando. Uh, I haven't been there in a while and I love SeaWorld. The roller coasters are amazing. Um, 
but I realized as I was getting ready for bed, plugging in my work device that I could not find my phone charger. Phone charger is in Kansas City. Yes, and I went and looked around my room. I just totally didn't see it. I think that the white phone charger on top of the white table, I just missed it. Uh, and it's gone. You can't, it won't be there. If I call and say, hey, I left my phone charger. Yeah, no. Um, so, uh, so I was like tossing and turning, just irritated that I lost another phone charger. I paid 40 bucks for that one at the airport. Yeah, 40 bucks. Um, I was desperate at the time because I had left another phone charger in a hotel room. Um, and uh, then I'm, I'm like in bed tossing and turning and then I realized like 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm like, why am I awake? I'm worrying about that woman from last night. Um, she Her boarding time for her flight to Baltimore was at 5.22, I think. Uh, and I really wish I had gotten her name uh, so I could find out whether or not, you know, she got on the flight and she got home okay. But um, I have to trust she did. I have to trust she did. Um, so yeah, toss and turn, toss and turn. Um, I get up like seven o'clock, not really having slept at all. Um, no phone, my phone's almost dead. So I finally run over to um, the shopping plaza next door. Ross is the highest end store in that little shopping plaza. I found a phone charging cord. I got back to my room and I'm charging my phone and it's like 10 o'clock in the morning. And I think, you know what? <sighs> it's too late, honestly, to get a start in going to SeaWorld for me. Um, I'd have to charge the phone and then make my way over there and blah, blah, blah. My van's at 6.30. So I kind of gave up the hope on going to SeaWorld. And I'm really disappointed because I wanted to ride some roller coasters and just scream. You know, that's I just need a good scream um, on a roller coaster. So whatever. Um, so I just jumped back in bed and I spent most of the day kind of just in and out of sleep, napping here and there. Um, the challenge with this trip for me, uh, on top of everything else is, um, uh, I meal prepped with the, with the idea that I was not going to be in my room today. So I ate most of my food. All I had left was a big giant container of, um, asparagus and broccoli nothing on it. No salt, no lemon juice, just broccoli and asparagus uh, and a cup noodle that I think I showed you the other day. Um, so that's what I've, I've had all day long <laughs> and an iced tea. Um, so yeah, it's just been kind of a, a flop of a layover, but things happen. Things like this happen. It's the, this is, if this is my worst problem today, fine, fine. Um, yeah, it's day three of three. I get to go home tonight um, for a little while. I'm home for like 22 hours, I think. Uh, we're flying to Houston and then to Vegas. Um, and then tomorrow night, I have a super short trip. It's like, it's really kind of like a long term with a short sit. Um, I'm going to uh, Louisville and then coming back the next morning. So there you go. Then I'm off for a couple of days. Um, yeah, kind of a bummer, this, this, this layover. Um, Thank God there's been no drama on the flights themselves because I'll tell you, last night was enough for me. But I'm rambling at this point. I need to jump in the shower and, and become a human being. So I will talk to you at the airport. Look at this. Can you, can you imagine leaving a place like this? I am shocked. That's like one of the worst I've ever seen. How do people leave? Oh, I can't even imagine. I can't. We have, we're going to Houston, we have 154 passengers. We're not being catered, we have nothing. <laughs> Sorry, honey. Is this like the belt of a waist trainer or something? What is that? I think that was in the role I saw those kids. Yeah, I saw that earlier. I what actually, is that? Ooh, things you find on an airplane. All right, yeah, that's how I sound sometimes. <laughs> and then I have to re-record. <laughs> so, uh, we're in Houston. Um, I think we're supposed to be boarding in five minutes, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon as we have another mechanical, which is really weird because, um, if you know who I fly for, black and yellow, uh, we have the youngest, the youngest fleet in the country. Um, our planes are very well maintained. We're one of the safest airlines in the world. 
but on this trip we've had two maintenance issues so far so it's a little just a little irritating but um we yeah so we're just sitting here waiting for the okay i'm afraid to even talk to the pilot about how long this he thinks this will take because i really just want to go home uh so bending like a palm tree well just when this trip today was a little boring yeah so we had this maintenance it maybe took 20 minutes a half hour not long at all thank goodness and then they're like are you ready to board and we realized like the cleaners hadn't even been on board yep we're ready to go cleaners hadn't even been on board and the supervisors looking at me like um and you just noticed oh. <laughs> then he wants to put a delay on me Mm -mm. No, so that didn't happen. Uh, we had like 15 people come on board and take care of the plane real quick, but oh, that was that was all the excitement I needed for this trip. Ta-da! I'm back in Las Vegas. Thank goodness. Oh my God. A three-day trip that seemed to last a week. Um, this last leg was easy once it got started. Um, you know, we had a mechanical delay, which is very strange for us. We don't have very many, many mechanical issues. Uh, and then the cleaning people didn't come on the aircraft. Like, maintenance comes and goes. And we're looking around like, wait a minute, we haven't seen cleaning people. And uh, I brought it to the gate agent's attention as they were just about to start boarding. I'm like, we can't board. We, don't even, we haven't even had the trash emptied. Like, the bathroom's still a wreck. Like where's where's our cleaning people and they were really mad that i didn't like run down the jet bridge to tell them that clean whatever cleaning people are usually they usually are hopping into the aircraft between passengers as they're leaving i mean it's like it's craziness but um yeah whatever it's over that was the hardest part of the day uh, the other challenge, as I said, that was the hardest part of it. We did have one other challenge in that uh, we weren't catered uh, in Orlando. And then uh, we weren't catered uh, in Houston. And we weren't... Uh, so we, we literally sold every single snack. And the only beverages I had left in my cart were a few waters... Uh, two uh, Bloody Mary mixes and a club soda. <laughs> Our carts were literally empty, like nothing. Um, uh, so it was it was a bit of a challenge to provide service to people when I just had nothing on the plane. By the time I got mid cabin, all I had left to offer was like a cheese tray and a Bloody Mary mix, you know, or something like that, or plain water. It was a little frustrating, a little embarrassing, honestly. It's like when you have people in your house and you don't have anything to offer them. That's what it felt like, but blah, 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 luxury problems. I'm home, so I'm gonna let you guys go. I'm gonna scoot back to the house, give the cat some treats and some love. We're all gonna go to sleep and wake up at like two in the afternoon, because right now it's just about, it's quarter of one in the morning. So we're gonna sleep real late tomorrow. Uh, I have one uh, two-day trip, which is just one leg to Louisville. It's a red eye. And then I come back the next day. So it's an easy trip. I, I'm probably going to post this video as a three-day and not include that trip because this video is long enough. So there you go. I will see you in the next video. I hope you have a great night. Thank you for joining me as always. And I will see you soon. Fly safe. Bye.